Let's spend a little time together and talk about one of Excel's most powerful functions in the entire function library, and that is the get pivot data function. The get pivot data function is ideal when creating dashboards. When you have a large set of data, but you want to cull just selected bits and pieces from that master set and show those values as perhaps KPIs, where you want to focus in on a specific value. Let's take this pivot table, for example. Suppose I want to showcase this value here, which is the total sales of baseballs for Sports Emporium in the Midwest. Now, what most people would do is they would type in something like equals and then type in the address of that cell, which is K9. Hit enter, and now the value of K9 is reflected in another location. But the way most people discover the get pivot data function is they don't want to type the cell address. Let me delete this. So they take a little shortcut by just typing in equals, and then with their mouse, they click on the cell that has the value in the pivot table. And now they're presented with what looks like an absolute piece of insanity. Now, most people can't hit the escape key fast enough to run away from this. But if you take the time to understand what each of these pieces are, and believe me, there are already pieces you're very familiar with, you'll find that this method of displaying key pieces of data in another location is far superior to something like equals K9. Even though that looks simpler, it has massive drawbacks. So let's get into understanding get pivot data. The get pivot data function is what I call a bounty hunter function. In other words, you tell it what you want and it will go get it and bring it back to you. So let's say that I want to show the grand total sales. So I have this table over here and it's got sales rep, date of sale, product, state, region, supplier, and sales. And suppose I wanna see the grand total sales in this cell. Let me scroll over. If I type in equals, and then the address that holds that total sales, I5, I will see the grand total sales reflected. But if I go into the pivot table and I break those total sales down, say by product, I'll put that in the rows. Now I see the word baseballs because baseballs is in cell I5. So now I have to come back up here and change this to the new location, J14. And now I see my grand total sales again. But let's go back into the pivot table and maybe we'll take these sales and break them down by region across our columns. Now the grand total sales is in 015. J14 is now looking at the sales for Midwest tennis balls. So every time the structure of this pivot table changes, I have to update my link to my KPI and my dashboard. Let's go back into the pivot table and take those products and regions out. So now we're back just to the total sales. So now instead of saying equals some cell reference, I'll say equals and click on the total sales. And what I get is a get pivot data function. Now, if you don't get this get pivot data function and instead you get like a normal cell reference, the reason for that would be, let's hit escape. If you go to the pivot table and go up to the analyze ribbon, next to the options button in the upper left, there's a little arrow you can hit. This option for generate get pivot data must be checked for the automatic generation of the get pivot data function. So if you're just getting a standard cell reference like I5, it's because this option has been turned off. So go back and turn it on. But let's go back to our mission. I'll type in equals click on the total sales, and I get the get pivot data function. Now, all it says here is to go get the sales in cell I4. Now, this total sales is actually in I5, but the pivot table begins in I4. So the upper left corner is what we're actually pointing at. We're not pointing to the cell that holds the value. We're just pointing to the start point of the pivot table. Sales is the name of the field that we wish to get information from, in this case, the total of column G. So when I hit enter, I see that number reflected. Now let's see what happens if we change the structure of the pivot table. I'll go to the pivot table and I'm gonna take product and put it in the rows. Notice the grand total sales KPI did not change because if you look at the formula, it says go get the sales from the pivot table that starts in cell I4. Well, sales without any modifiers has now moved to cell J14. We go back to the pivot table. I'm going to add region to the columns. The total sales is now in cell 015, but get pivot data doesn't care. It just says, I'm going to go get the sales from the pivot table that starts in I4. No matter where it is, even if it changes, I will get it and bring it back to you. That's why I call it a bounty hunter. So even though without question, this is more complicated than just typing in something like equals 015, the resilience you get from the get pivot data function far outweighs its complexity. So now let's look at some examples of the get pivot data function in action and some various use cases. Be sure to download this file from the link in the video description so you can follow along as I develop the solution or go back and just look at all the finished formulas. So I've got that same data set here of sales representative, product state, region supplier sales. So let's just minimize that because we don't really need to see that at the moment. So here I built a pivot table 
If you look at the field wells, I've got sales in the values, products in the rows, regions in the columns. Let's close that for now. If I wanted to find and extract the grand total sales for all regions, all products, in the old days, I would type in something like equals 024, hit enter, and I would get the grand total sales. But with get pivot data, I'll type in equals, and then just click on the grand total. Now think about this, even though the formula is more complex, it was actually easier to create because I didn't have to type anything, I just clicked the grand total sales. And so this says, go get the sales for the pivot table that starts in cell I-13. I'll hit enter, it's the same value. Now what if we wanted to get the total sales just for the West region? Well, the old way would be to say equals and then N24. But with get pivot data, I'll type in equals and just click on the total sales for West. Now the get pivot data got a little more complicated because now it says, go get the sales for the pivot table that starts in cell I-13, but only where the region equals West. So region equals West is a filter that has been applied to the total sales. So now we only get the total sales where regions are West. We hit enter, it's the same value. So what you're looking at here is essentially get me the pivot data field for the pivot table that starts at I-13 where this particular field is equal to this particular value. From this point forward, it's just all filters. Give me a category, give me a value. Give me a category, give me a value. So let's say that we wanted the total sales for just gloves. Total sales for gloves is in 019, so I type in equals 019, hit enter, and I've got the total sales for gloves. But wouldn't it be easier to just type in equals and then go click on the total sales for gloves? Hit enter, same answer. So go get the sales for the pivot table that starts in cell I-13 where the product equals gloves. Now let's look at compound filtering. I want the total sales where the product is gloves, but from the West region. Now we can see this value right here in cell N19. So in the old days, I would click and type in equals N19, hit enter, and I return the value. But with get pivot data, I type in equals, click on cell N19, hit enter, same value. But look at the formula. Get pivot data says, go retrieve the cells from the pivot table that starts in I-13, where the product is gloves and the region is west. So now we've applied two filters, a product filter and a region filter. And you can have up to 126 of these filter pairs. Now let's do something a little more interesting. Instead of just pointing to pre-calculated answers, we can use values from the pivot table in additional calculations to create more answers. So let's say that we would like to see the percentage of sales for the West compared to all sales. Now in the old days, we'd take the total sales for West as the numerator, which would be equals N24, and divide that by the total sales for everything as the denominator, O24. Hit enter, and there's my percentage of West sales compared to all sales. But with get pivot data, we can say equals, click, on the total sales for West. So now we're getting the sales for the pivot table in I-13 where the region is West, divided by, and then I'll click on the total sales for the pivot table that starts in I-13. Hit enter, same answer. Now this formula is longer and more complicated than this one, but remember when the structure of the pivot table changes, this 16.8% value will not turn into something else. So no matter where these fields travel to in the pivot table, we'll still be able to answer that question. For our final example, let's build a bit of dynamism into this. Let's give the user the ability to select their region and their product, and then have the get pivot data bounty hunter function go find those answers and bring them back. I have two drop-down lists built in, one to allow the user to select a region, and another to allow the user to select a product. Now these two drop-down lists are just derived using normal data validation coming from these two lists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a get pivot data function that starts with a static region product definition, but then we'll take that static declaration and turn it into a dynamic declaration. So I'll begin by typing in equals, and I'll just click on any value in the middle of this pivot table, just so I can get two different filters in place. So here I'm getting the total sales for the pivot table that starts in I-13, where the product is gloves and the region is southeast. I hit enter, and there's the value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and change the filter that filters product. So instead of it being filtered by hard-coded gloves, I want to be filtered by whatever the user picks here in K9. Likewise, instead of filtering a static southeast for region, I want to filter by whatever the user picks here in cell K8. So the fields are static, but the user's choice is dynamic. Now, right now, these two cells are empty, so when I hit enter, I'm going to get a reference error because there is no empty product, empty region. 
but let's go to the region. We'll select the region, go to product, select the product, and we can see from the get pivot data function that we've retrieved the product for the user selection in K9 and the region of K8. If the user wishes to change this to a different region, like West, and then to a different product, like stepper machines, the bounty hunter function will locate and return, in this case, stepper machines from the West. For a lot of people, the pivot table is their final product. But in my world, the pivot table is usually the second to the last step, the last step being some sort of dashboard that displays a series of KPIs, those KPIs being culled from the pivot table. And for my money, there's no better function to go hunt down, find, and return those values than the get pivot data function. It looks scary, but once you understand what it's doing, it's actually very simple, and you don't have to write it. So go out and give pivot data a try, build some static declarations, build some dynamic declarations, make your dashboards much more interactive and easier to manage. Don't forget to download this file so you can go back and look at all of the formulas. And I'd really love to know what you think about this function. Have you used it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Put your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you for watching. And remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.